another day for another story. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to some of my friends this week and shared with them the book I was going to be reading and I was so ready for it and so pumped and I was surprised that so many have not yet let alone read this story but they have not even heard of it so it made me even more ready to get this story out for you all and i hope you enjoy it as much as i do um everybody loves a good sequel uh, a good continuation of a story especially if it was a story they loved so this is the sequel so uh, the story that comes after the story of cloudy with a chance of meatballs so you might have been wondering to yourself at the end of our last story what happened to the town of chew and swallow after everybody left did it keep raining food did it get overpopulated with just these piles and piles of all this stuff because there was no one there to clean it up so we get to kind of get to see what happened to this place what's going on so um i'm really excited to read this to you especially if you haven't heard this before if you haven't read this before so it's gonna be really fun this is so this is pickles to pittsburgh there's a little picture of the cover. How silly is that? Oh my goodness. Those are huge pickles. I would actually love it if I could find a pickle that big. Okay, so this starts off with a letter from Grandpa. We remember Grandpa. Dear Henry and Kate, I'm having the best vacation ever, but I don't get much rest. I really wish you were here. Our group travels around in a big blue bus and somehow it manages to climb up and down the tallest and bumpiest mountains and around some of the biggest plants I've ever seen. Where is he, I wonder? We visited many unusual places, met the local people, and even helped them out with some of their chores. I'm taking lots of pictures because this place is hard to believe. Can't wait till I see you next Thursday. Love and hugs, Grandpa. I know when people go on trips, I always ask them to take lots of pictures so I can see what kind of things they saw and what they experienced. So there's Grandpa with his little camera. We all missed Grandpa an awful lot. His Saturday morning pancakes, his mostly funny jokes, and especially his wonderful bedtime stories. Tomorrow would be Thursday and he'd be home. We could hardly wait to hear where he had been and what he had done. To pass the time, we helped Mom make spaghetti and meatballs for dinner. Henry made the largest meatballs we'd ever seen. They, hard, they barely fit into the pot. Mom thanked us for helping, but asked that the meatballs be much smaller next time. I don't know, I think really giant meatballs are always kind of fun to cut into. After we finished eating, Henry and I cleared the table so we could help bake a special welcome home cake for Grandpa. It was chocolate with strawberry icing and made in the shape of Grandpa's face. We licked as much of the batter off the spoons as we possibly could. Now, who has done that? Licking cake batter when you're baking. So yummy. And look at that cake. They are doing such a great job. <laughs> I took Grandpa's postcard up to my room and put it on the little table beside my bed. I kept staring at it and wondering. The lamplight made bright a phot photograph of a wonderful place that seemed somehow familiar. I said good night to it and drifted off into my dreams. So now she's dreaming. Surrounded by milky blue skies and with Henry as my co-pilot. We carefully steer our plane through large puffs of mist. Soon we find ourselves soaring over an island, a very lumpy island. From the air, it looks like a gigantic beast. Where do you think they're going? Immense vegetables, salads, and desserts lie beneath us. The mountains look like huge loaves of bread. Where are they going? Look at that. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. 
we decide to take a closer look and prepare ourselves for a bumpy landing, avoiding some broccoli and narrowly missing a tremendous hamburger on an oversized bun. We come down and taxi on what appears to be a giant strip of crispy bacon. Henry and I step down from the plane and look around in awe. Before us lies a strange but wonderful landscape. We are surrounded by larger than life vegetables. Nearby is a lake that smells like breakfast, bordered, bordered by leafy jungles and lettuce that resemble a tossed salad. I love the vocabulary in this story. It really helps you just visualize what they are seeing and feeling and experiencing. Oh, so cool. We try to keep our balance as we walk around the top of a gigantic bagel and past a forest of towering carrots. One is pierced by a tunnel large enough for a car to drive through. Off in the distance, we see popcorn snowing down onto the peaks of enormous rolls. Wave abo way above our heads, high up in the trees that look like broccoli, chubby birds are nestled in huge shredded wheat biscuits. <laughs> they are just surrounded, they are just surrounded by all this huge food. My word. I would not want to go to this place hungry. I would eat way too much. Ahead of us, at the end of a long road, lies what looks like an abandoned town. Eager to know where we are, we start walking toward it. Sweet-smelling rain begins to fall. It collects in hundreds of open containers that are lined up in a field beside the road. Lots of orange puddles are everywhere. Orange juice. All of a sudden, we find ourselves standing in the shadow of a giant tuna fish sandwich, being delicately airlifted by helicopter. In the distance, another helicopter races off with a jumbo pickle in tow. That's the size of that sandwich. It's as big as the plane almost. My word. When we reach what is left of the town, we see the remnants of a sign welcoming us to a place called Chew and Swallow. Somehow, I know I've heard that name somewhere before. We walk through the entire town in amazement. So look what has become of this town. It has just become overrun with all kinds of food. It's making me hungry too. <laughs> Up ahead, lots of workers wearing helmets and dressed in matching uniforms are loading huge potatoes onto a truck. I wonder what they're doing. Other trucks sag under the weight of immense artichokes, enormous eggplants, and massive peas and carrots. Foot-long veal cutlets are stacked up to be packed for shipping. What are they doing? Hmm. For shipping. To the east, the weather is changing and we can see sandwiches raining down. As soon as they land, they are piled up neatly, ready for shipment on a freighter, freighter anchored down by the shore. Large reservoirs of milk and cream flow into extra large containers, which are lined up ready to be loaded onto a ship. Printed on the sides of the trucks are the words, Falling Food Company, large food for large and small countries, free. So they're taking this food and they're shipping it to other countries. That's kind of cool. Interesting. I love in this reservoir seeing how they're how they're getting that milk stored. That's so such a cool idea, so innovative. One of the workers tells us that Chew and Swallow used to be a very ordinary little town. Except that instead of weather, food rained down from the sky for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
Back then, he says, by some quirk of nature, the falling food grew larger and larger. So we remember that from the story. Storms of gigantic food threatened normal life. So the people took their belongings and sailed away to a new land on rafts made of huge slices of stale bread. And remember, they used those shit, the boats they made, and they made houses. I thought that was so cool that they did that. They returned years later to see what had happened to Chew and Swallow. They discovered an endless food supply and decided to create the Falling Food Company. Now daily shipments are made to all parts of the world, from the smallest towns to the largest cities. As soon as the food lands, it is wrapped, boxed, bottled, or packaged and sent out to people who need it. So cool of them to be doing that. Even with poverty and drought throughout the world. Showing some of the places. They're able to send this food. There is always enough food for everyone. Henriette and I think this is a great idea. We wish we could stay and work here, but I don't think they're, they hire kids. It's getting late and we hate to leave, but we really have to be headed home. Mom's expecting us for dinner. The workers give us a two foot wide chocolate chip cookie, which we carry back to the plane. It was barely, it barely fits through the door. This is a big cookie. Look at the size of that thing. It's going to take up all the space in the plane. We buckle up. I rev the engine and we start rolling down the bacon runway. As everyone waves goodbye, we can see dinner approaching from the west. Spaghetti and meatballs. I think as we gain altitude, Chew and Swallow slowly vanishes into the distance. My alarm clock woke me with a jolt. It was finally Thursday and I wanted to get to school fast. The sooner I got there, the sooner I'd get home and the sooner I'd see grandpa. Who's ever at school and you know that something exciting is coming when you get back home and you just hope this, the day just speeds by, goes quickly. When we got home, we ran as fast as we could into Grandpa's waiting arms. I brought back something for you, said Grandpa, and he gave each of us a very large box containing a chocolate chip cookie he had gotten on his trip. They were the biggest we had ever seen, almost two feet wide. Where do we think Grandpa was? Mom made Grandpa's favorite dinner, chicken and dumplings and we surprised him with our special welcome home cake. He chose the slice with the mustache. By the time dinner was done, it was late and Grandpa was tired. When he was all tucked in bed, we knocked on his door to give him an extra good night kiss. Then I told Grandpa the most wonderful tall tale bedtime story he'd ever heard. It began surrounded by milky blue skies and with Henry as my co-pilot. Grandpa stayed awake till the very end. Then he looked at us with a very funny glint in his eye and said, wait till I show you the pictures I took on my trip. And then he drifted off into his own wonderful dreams. I I have a guess where I think Grandpa went. <laughs> see what you see what you all think. It's kind of nice those stories that leave leave off open ended, so we can kind of make our own little guesses about what happened. Uh, one thing I will end with this story. I just love 
one of one of my biggest pet peeves ever has been wasting food it just breaks my heart whenever i have something and it goes bad or i have too much of something throwing away food is just always so hard for me i love that these people of chew and swallow took it upon themselves they went back to this place and didn't just leave after they saw all this food like okay well it's good we left no they saw all this food and they were like what's happening with this food What's what's going to happen if we don't take care of it? It's going to waste. No one's going to be able to eat it, to enjoy it. What can we do to solve this problem? And they worked together and they got all these methods of shipping this food out, boats, planes, and they made sure that this food, no, it's not going to waste. This is good. This is good food. We're going to send it to people who really need it. And I love that they took that initiative and took it upon themselves to help somebody they saw something that others could benefit from maybe not themselves but others and they f saw what needed to be done and they did it and i love that i thought it was such a cool way to end that kind of whole story so cloudy with a chance of meatballs and seeing how that kind of ended and what the result of all that food was because i didn't like thinking of all this food just sitting there and no one's eating it and it's just going bad so i thought that was such a great end to this story i loved it loved it loved it so i hope you enjoyed that with me today especially if this is a story that you've not read or even heard of because it's so fun such a fun story uh I will have a great one for you next week. Thank you for joining me. I saw a couple of my friends here. So thanks for joining me today. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye, friends.